Today I'm going to show you guys how you can actually go ahead and repaste your Xbox 360 Super Slim version. First thing, you want to remove the hard drive on the bottom side. By doing that, you just have to take this clip. Is that my Xbox? That's why I put my latex gloves in. I don't want to get myself dirty. So remove the cover for the hard drive first. Next, you want to pull out the hard drive. This is a 250 gig hard drive. Just pull the thing out. And this one is already dirty. If you want to go ahead, you can go ahead and clean up your hard drive on the top. Now, next, you want to remove this top cover on the side. What I recommend you guys to grab is uh, a guitar pick. It's really handy for it's kind of all purpose. So what do you want to do? Grab the Xbox to on this angle so you guys can see it. Have the camera on the way. So you're gonna put it right between the top cover and the side cover, and then just put it in and just go ahead and lift it up. Let me see if I can do it this way. There it slowly. Once it goes, once it's lifting up, hold it with your other hand so it just won't clamp back down. Once you got it a little bit up right there, then you're just gonna put your fingers, just pull it up. And then the whole thing will just come out. These are the clamps that are in the side. So once you remove this, you can go ahead and clean it up. I'll just put this to one side so I clean everything at once now on this side we are done so you're gonna flip it to the other side on this side there's no hard drive or any other cover except this main cover so the same thing you want to put it on the side once i got a little bit up the front side i just go juggle it around and it will come out eventually and it is really dirty, you want to clean with a toothbrush, an old toothbrush if you have, or any kind of brush. I always use my old toothbrush, that way it's cheaper and you're kind of recycling. Now, on this side, there's one more thing you must take it out. It's the Wi-Fi board, which is right here. There is one screw holding it in place, down there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me zoom in, right there. You want to remove that screw right there. Right. Once you remove that screw, now you can just, it's kind of USB type, so you can just pull it out. Now you want to go ahead and take the bottom side of the Xbox, not the top side, the bottom side out and by doing that you need to there is on the back side right where the two usbs are on this empty part right there right at the back of this side let me see if you guys can see it there is this kind of clamp right there you want to lift it up and now spread this two once you spread those i recommend you guys to just pull it up a little bit you won't break just put it overlap it so it won't just go back in place. Um, meanwhile, you can work on this side. Yeah, they, it's the same type of clamp down there. It's just kind of, you have to stick your screwdriver down there and just, you will eventually get it. While you're doing it, I'm just with my fingers, I'm just pulling apart these two, just like that. So, and with this screwdriver, I'm just putting it inside and just moving it towards the hard drive so eventually you're gonna get it open there you go once it's open just pull it up away put it on the front top side and just lift up the cover now this is the bottom cover 
That's your CPU and GPU right there. There's only one chip. First thing here, we want to remove the black screws. Those are the long one. One, two, three, four, five. There are in total five of them. So let's go ahead and unscrew those. There you have your five long black screws. You wanna grab this for five, put it to the side. And next, we wanna remove the CD-ROM cover for the just this part right there. We wanna remove this one right here so we can remove the plastic on the front. In order to do that. You see this gap right there? Just put your finger and just pull it apart. Make sure here, don't pull this one, just put it in between the tiniest cover. Once you do that, here, just don't yank it up, you're gonna break it. Just hold it up, just go to side. Okay, if it's not coming up, again, use your guitar pick, put it in between the Eject button on this one and now twist it, it will come out. There's only this kind of clamps in it, so you take it away from there. By taking this away, now we can remove the top part, the front plate. So let's before we remove the front plate, let's go ahead and remove the top part now that we remove the screws. So lift it up. While you're lifting up, pull the front cover a little bit towards the front. And now, you, there you have it. This is the top cover. All right. Now, be very careful with the front plate. There's a flex cable right there. You don't want to Cut that flex cable. You have to be very careful with that flex cable right there. Let me see. Once you lift it up, watch out for the flex cable right there. Let me see. Focus, focus. Right there. You don't want to rip this flex cable. Go on, hook it. Hold. Lift up this side first. Actually, before you lifting up, lift up this brown cover like that. Lift up 90 degree angle. Now you can lift up the white and then pull it towards the other side. All right. Now this is the top cover, the front. Now you can put it on the side. So we're gonna remove the CD-ROM first. Lift the CD-ROM from the front side. On the back, you gotta remove the power and the SATA cable. So just lift up a little bit and just, they're kinda hard, just pull them out. And there you have it. You don't need to clean your CD-ROM, it's clean inside. So just put it to the side. Now what do you want to do? You want to remove this plastic shielding or the heat sink. Just lift it up. And this is your disgusting fan right there. So we got to clean that up. And before we go to that, I mean, want to remove this hard drive caddy right here. Just unhook the red cable, the power cable right beside it, these two. Now, you want to... Hmm. I dropped my brown cable, so... Don't try not to lose these brown things here. 
cover for your clips. If it falls down, don't worry, just uh, you can put it back in. Oops. In a latex gloves, it's really hard to do this job. There you go. Now, what do you want to do first? You want to remove this single screw at the back. All right, now that you remove the screw on the back side, we also have to remove one more screw right at the back of here, other end. So if you follow it, it's this one right there. So remove this one. I'm actually going to show you guys how to speed up your fan so you get actually better uh, performance and longer lasting Xbox. Like so. Now we can do the two things here. In order to clean the fan, we can remove the fan and not really remove the heat sink. But then we want to replace the thermal paste too, so we do want to remove the heat sink and the fan. So in order to remove the heat sink, we actually need and must remove the motherboard. To do that, you flip it back down and remove all the screws and including the black screws at the, in the middle. All right, now that we remove all the screws on the top, we do want to remove the front plate. So let's go ahead and remove the front plate. There's only two screws right there. All right, now that we remove that, and now we can just actually pull it out. It is kind of, again, USB type stuff connectors but it's not a USB one actually it is type of it so once we remove those and we remove all the screws at the bottom make sure there's nothing left you can just put it set it down remove the plastic holder for the CD ROM pull it out now you want to remove the motherboard the front side up first so grab the heat sink and just pull the front side up and then just pull away from the top side the back side i mean now you can put the back cover as you can see there is kind of ants in here dead ants in the corner right there So now that we got the hard and the motherboard out, we have to remove the heat sink. So we gotta flip it back over and remove this bracket right there. In order to remove this bracket right here, you have to grab a, a flat screwdriver, small one that actually can fit in between these two gaps, any of those two gaps. And then you're just gonna put it in like that let me zoom in and then you're gonna pull it towards the center just like this you're gonna do it slowly and do the other one on the bottom side do the other side and then eventually one of this is gonna give away and then now you can go ahead and lift if i'm pulling this way to that side you see how this one just popped open you just lift it up right there now we're gonna do this one if this one is not actually popping right here so i'm gonna do this one right now so maybe this one will pop up yep almost yep right there just came up once i got these two the rest are easy there you go once you got this clamp out Move everything here. 
can go ahead slowly and lift up the motherboard. Also disconnect the fan right there prior to this. Okay. Remove all the screws out of the way. So this is your motherboard, uh, your CPU, GPU, and this is your fan that you actually need to clean it up and repaste, remove the thermal paste out of this one. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the heatsink, clean up the fan, and clean up the thermal paste over the CPU, and clean up the whole plastic covers. And I'll be back right after this. All right, now that we clean it up, I cleaned up the whole heatsink, the fan, and the CPU and GPU are cleaned up. And I cleaned it up with an alcohol. So now that we can either do with an Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste or an MX4. So it depends. For me, in my case, I would recommend that you guys put Arctic Silver 5. But in my case, it's for a client. I offered them and they rejected. They rather put an MX4 because it's a little bit cheaper. But that's their decision, not my decision. Now, for applying, I don't recommend you guys go straight on the GPU because the superficie is really big. And if I don't know if you guys pay attention or not, the heat sink, the most important part is the copper side in the bottom. So try to apply right in the middle of the copper, right there. And then I just put one drop on every corner, just like that. That's the way I do my thermal pasting. And I've been doing this for a long time and with no issue. So put that much, don't put too much, just uh, tiny drops. And these ones, once you. Once you start uh, pushing down, it will just spread around it. So, so now, before we actually put the heatsink on, I'm going to show you guys a trick, and it really helps you out because we need a pressure from the heatsink to the GPU, and that pressure is caused by this metal sheet that goes on the back. So, what I suggest that you guys do. Just grab these ones and just bend the legs a little bit more, just like that, on every four. So what this does, it will create a more pressure toward the, it will pull the CPU towards the heatsink, towards the, the heatsink towards the CPU even harder, and you get a better contact on the CPU and the GPU. So let's put it back in. So make sure the heating goes in nicely. Straight down. Once it's down, just flip it over holding the heatsink. There is the left. Just hold the middle. Put the Corner side first, and make sure you put it straight on the line. Otherwise, you're gonna get this thing hit the capacitors on the bottom. You wanna aim to the middle of the capacitor that where it is empty. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me zoom in. Right there. You want this black dot plastic be right in the middle of there. So put that corner first and aim a straight line towards this other screw right there. That way that's the safest way. Now just grab your thumb and just push it down. There you go. Now we got these two in. We're gonna push down the other side in. You have to really push down and if it doesn't work just try to 
pull a little up there you go with this one right here i'll just push it so the plate will go that way now we just do the last one and there we have it now we got the heatsink in place nice and tight now the, here's a trick to get your fan speed up the fan speed is a 12 volt fan and the Microsoft it just gives you and releases you with a 30 or 20 percent fan speed only to keep the noise down and the heat it just accumulates more in the heat sink and it's not a automatic fan so you detect there's a higher temperature it spins higher there's nothing like that in here so what I recommend you guys to just unlock the maximum speed of your fan it was better for your CPU but you end up doing more service cleaning every what eight nine months which is worth it so in order to do that you just have to grab these connectors right here let me see right there these connectors you see all this color cabling is a blue cable right there or kind of greenish type you're just gonna go and snap that cable right off just grab it and snap it off okay once you snap that off just leave it right there and connect it in now once you turn on your xbox the fan is gonna spin at maximum speed and that's good for your cpu and gpu but it will get more dust inside your console but depends your environment if your room is really dusty obviously there's going to be more dust in if you keep your room clean less dust will be inside here so now that we clean it up we thermal paste it and we cut the wire to have faster fan we're going to put the whole thing back together so first thing first we need the bottom cover so grab the bottom cover you're gonna put the back side where the power jack everything is in first put it in 45 degree angle once you got the that side in and then you're gonna just release down the heart motherboard to the bottom next you want to put the plastic for the cd ROM underneath i always forget this one so i try to put it first grab the front panel sensor just plug it in. Whoops. Let's try it again. There you go. You don't need to put the screws right now, so. And grab the hard drive caddy. Make sure the wire, these wires, they go from the top side. Put that in. Plug in the power cable for the hard drive. The SATA cable right there behind it. So you should get it just like this. And we're gonna put the shielding for the heatsink. I mean for the fan. Right there. Make sure it's really up straight down so you don't have any points sticking out. Once you got that in, you can go ahead, once for all, put the CD, ouch, CD ROM. So grab the power jack first. You can do this in the air, you don't have to put the CD ROM in, so it's easier this way. Alright, now that you got the 
CD ROM in, just put the back side down slowly, and now it's done. All right, we're gonna put the top cover first before we flip it over to put the screws in, otherwise, the whole thing is gonna fall apart. So, grab your top part, push it in. Now hold it together and just flip it over. And you're gonna start screwing all the screws, including the four in here, and including two screws on the front panel. All right, now we're gonna put the bigger the screws, the black ones. All right, now that we have all the screws in, it's safe to turn it over if you want to, but not yet. If you want to go ahead and you can put the Wi-Fi board right now. So put the Wi-Fi board in. Just focus this one. Put it in. And put the screw for it. There. Now you can go ahead and put the bottom cover on it. Put the, that's the bottom cover. When you put in the bottom cover, just put the back side first. Once you have the back, back cover, you want to place the front plate. In order to place, put the front plate, be careful with this one. You want to hold it sideways and lift up the brown cover. Let me zoom in so you guys can see it. Right there, and you're gonna slide in first the blue right underneath the brown, push the cover down, and that's it. Now, slowly, you're gonna grab the whole thing and just push it down so it goes in a I think I forgot a screw or something because that lock him down nicely. So where it's supposed to be something in the middle. So I'm just gonna double check that. There you go. 
that's in place. Now we're gonna put push down the other side. There. Now that's down. Now we're gonna put the cover on the Wi-Fi side. That's the one with the. And if you wanna know which one goes where, on this side you see two two entry. On this side there is nothing. The one with the two clips in here, it goes to the Wi-Fi side. You just push down, and that's it. Flip it over. Obviously, the hard drive and the hard drive entrance goes just like that. Make sure it's in place nicely. Beautiful. You can grab your hard drive and push in your hard drive and put the power for the hard drive. And oh, also, you need to put the front cover for the CD ROM. And that's obviously this way because the Xbox is reading the letters. So first put the one by the eject button in, push down, and push down the other side. And that's it. And this is how you do your service job for your Xbox Super Slim. If you guys have any comments, any questions, leave them in the comment area. And I'll try to respond as much as I can. And if you guys subscribe, it really helps. And I'll do some giveaway items. As soon as I heard, I hit some limit on subscriptions, subscriptors. So, thanks for watching, guys.